Today we're going to be talking about the hamstrings and why you need to stop stretching them if you have lower back pain. We're going to cover essentially three different parts. We're going to look at number one, the role of the hamstrings, so what are they there to do. Um, then we're going to talk about the stretch reflex and sensitivity, which is where we'll be able to start linking in with lower back pain. And then we're going to talk about how to reduce hamstring tightness in a more effective way. If you are struggling with lower back pain, you do need some help click the link below. You can go through to my how to overcome lower back pain, either online or face-to-face -face consultations. Both the links are there. So if you want to start building a rehab program for yourself, then please do click the link and get in touch. First of all, the role of the hamstrings when it comes to lower back pain. Number one, it's more of a symptom than a cause. So it's there because of the lower of, of the low back pain rather than they're causing it. So the first thing we have to do is understand what's causing the problem. And then the second thing is, is it neural tension or is it hamstring tightness? And what I mean by neural tension, as you can see on this diagram here, you've got the sciatic nerve coming down, going right in a sense sort of underneath both the hamstrings. or I should say all three of the hamstrings really, coming down there. So what we have to understand, is it this neural tension from this sciatic nerve coming down through here, or is it muscular tightness from the hamstring? The second part of this in the role of the hamstrings is more from a, a biomechanical and a general perspective. So what are the hamstrings there to do? Well, they are there to help stabilise the pelvis, or that is a part of it. They also work in lifting and walking, which I'll explain um, in the next slide. But when it comes to uh, stabilising of the pelvis, it works with glute medius, glute minimus, um, the deep hip muscles, the deep external rotators and internal rotators, and the adductors. Now, if we keep focusing on the hamstrings, what we start to understand is they are inefficiently located to stabilize the pelvis on their own. So what we have to understand is that they work with all these different muscles. And the reason they're inefficiently located is because they join on to the sort of the bottom of the pelvis here on what's known as the ischium or the sit bones as some people call them. But the reason they're ineffective is we've got the center line coming down through here and it's because they are so close to the center line. So if you can think of um, like a, a tent or a, a sail, for example, but we're going to talk about the pelvis here, they're more efficiently stabilized from the from further away um, from the, um, the center line. So they've gone from high up here to low down here, high up here to low down here, and they've gone, although albeit not very much, but they've gone further away from the center line. If we've got them so close to the center line and they either join on closer to it or further away from it, they're not as efficiently, lo that means they're not as efficiently located. So what's more effective is we need to be working on glute medius, glute minimus, also the adductors to some degree and bring all these muscles together and that will be in part how we go about stabilizing the pelvis stabilizing the spine and giving it that um, opportunity, one, for the hamstrings to relax and two, for the spines to, spine to stabilize. And finally, we're focusing a little bit more on the sort of the biomechanics and the practical parts of when they work. So when we're talking about walking and running, it's all about deceleration. So they're not necessarily, if we go onto a hamstring curl machine, that's probably the most reverse type of exercise because it's that concentric yes they do need to concentrically work and bend the knee but they only really bend the knee to lift the foot up so they don't need to be let's just say massively strong there does need to be some degree of balance between the quads and the hamstrings i understand that um, but with regards to the actual biomechanics of it it's a deceleration so when the foot hits the floor the hamstrings contract to stop the essentially the femur falling off the front of the tibia. And then in lifting, they assist in hip extension. So hip extension, so this is a flexed hip. When I stand up straight, it then becomes an extended hip. So it assists in that hip extension. So they're not, again, they're not necessarily straightening the knee. What they're doing is they're pulling down 
in this direction with the glutes which are contracting, which is able to push the hips forward. So the, essentially the hips are coming forward and they're sort of pulling the upper body up and round, if you will. Um, so that is the hip extension. So that if you're going to do any exercises for them, you want to be doing deceleration exercises or you want to be doing hip extension exercise rather than knee flexion exercises because that's in some respects how they're biomechanically put together and that's how they biomechanically work. Then we get the stretch reflex which is essentially what's making them become tight and in some respects it's the stretching of and the instability so the, the stretching of the hamstrings and the instability through the pelvis which is probably going to be causing them to be tight. And the stretch reflex is as a muscle lengthens, so as you stretch your hamstrings, muscle contracts to hold muscle so not to overstretch. So when you get to the end of your hamstring stretch, that's not the stretch, that's the muscle contracting because it doesn't want to overstretch it. So there's a neuromuscular component to this, keeping it tight. And the stretch reflex or myostatic reflex refers to the contraction of the muscle in response to passive stretching. So that's as it's getting longer, it's going to start to stretch, which is going to make you feel the stretch. But it's not a stretch. It's the muscle contracting, stopping you from overstretching. So when a muscle is stretched, the stretch reflex re regulates the length of the muscle automatically by increasing its contractility as long as the stretch is within physiological limits. So that's the first thing to understand. The next thing to understand is the sensitivity. And the sensitivity is very simply, the more this is repeated, the more the muscle becomes to contraction. So essentially all that's happening is when you stretch it, you're making the muscle more sensitive to contract earlier, which is causing or at least contributing to the tight hamstrings. So when we stop stretching the hamstrings and start stabilizing the pelvis, stabilizing the spine, we get a much more effective hamstring length and it will start to um, allow you to lengthen your hamstrings that much further in some respects without even stretching it. What you then might find is that some sort of stretch has a little bit more of an effect because you're starting to get past this stretch reflex. So how do we then start reducing tightness in the hamstrings and then start helping you overcome your lower back pain? Well, essentially, it's these three things here. So first of all, we need to stretch and stabilize the hips. And then we need to stabilize the spine with exercise. So with regards to stretching the hips, it will be the glute muscles, it will be the adductor muscles, it will be the hip flexor muscles, in here, so essentially we're going all around the hip, getting rid of any um, excess tightness. Then we come on to stabilizing the hip. So what we can then do is use exercises like the bird dog, which will use this type of stance here, being down on one knee and the opposite arm here, to start stabilizing across the pelvis. Also, we can start using the plank exercise, but we may need to build some strength and endurance in it uh, initially to be able to get you into this position and to hold it, because then the stability is going to come in when we lift an arm up and place it on the lower back and keep the hips centered across. Because what we don't want to be doing is we don't want to be shifting the pelvis during any plank when we lift an arm up. So how we go about reducing tightness in the hamstrings is basically sorting out and moving around the problem, which is stretching and stabilizing the hips and stabilizing the spine using strength, endurance and stability exercises. If you found this tutorial useful, please do hit the like button below. If you learned something new, hit the thanks button. If you uh, want to leave a comment or a question, please do leave it in the comment section below. And if you want to watch more tutorials like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon.